A couple of weeks ago, I took delivery of the Huawei MateBook X Pro. I had a lot of high expectations for it as the MateBook X from last year was one of my favorite ultra portables of 2017. So there was a lot of hype, there's a lot of hoopla, but I wanted to see if it lived up to it. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this is the review of the Huawei MateBook X Pro. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification icon so this way you'll be alerted when I post new videos. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all the latest updates. Last year, I reviewed the Huawei MateBook X, one of my favorite ultra portables of 2017. Had a lot of great things going for it. A great 2K display, 7th generation processor, good looks, great build quality, and superb speakers. But it did have its shortcomings. It didn't have great battery life, and it didn't have a touch display. Fast forward a year later, Huawei releases the Huawei MateBook X Pro, a worthy follow-up to the MateBook X from last year, and to me, Huawei's hit a home run. And I can say with confidence that Huawei's pretty much improved every area of this device, which is very uncommon in the laptop arena. It's one of the best ultra portables you can buy in 2018, coming in at one of the best values. We'll talk more about the price in just a little bit. Now let's start off with its strongest feature, in my opinion, its display. It's a 13.9 inch 3K touch display. It's a resolution of 3000 by 2000, that's 259 pixels per inch, and it has a 3x2 aspect ratio. It also is a multi-touch display, something you didn't get with the MateBook X from last year. And it barely has any bezels with a 91% screen to body ratio. That's insane. And at 458 nits, you're looking at the brightest display in its category, beating out the MacBook Pro, but barely, the HP Spectre 13, the Dell XPS 13 9370, and the category average of 305 nits. And having such a bright display means you're going to be able to use this in both indoor and outdoor use, and that's fantastic. And it covers the color gamut really well at 124% sRGB, certainly above the category average of 114%, beating out the HP Spectre 13, the Apple MacBook Pro, but not by much, and the Dell XPS 13 9370. You're looking at a very crisp display with good contrast, good black levels, and very good color accuracy. And it's covered in Gorilla Glass, making it more or less scratch resistant. And of course, these insanely thin bezels come at a price, having to put the webcam between the F6 and F7 keys. Now, I like the fact that you can hide it when it's not in use, but its placement is unfortunate. You'll look at your knuckles and up your nose. Not very flattering and not very good. But I have to say it is a secure webcam, so nobody will be spying on you when it's not in use. That's actually pretty good. The MateBook X Pro weighs under 3 pounds, it's 2.93 pounds or 1.33 kilograms and it's only 14.6 millimeters thick or 0.57 inches. Now I imported my unit from China through AliExpress and I have the Core i5-8250U CPU with the dedicated GPU, it's the NVIDIA MX150 with 2GB of video memory. You can't really get this model in the United States so you will have to import it and pay a premium on top of that. And in the US, Huawei is very aggressive with the pricing, coming in at $1499 for its highest model. It's the Core i7-8550U with that dedicated GPU, again the MX150 with those 2GB of video memory. You could also get the 16GB of DDR4 RAM. And it's also sold in the Microsoft Store. I'll put the link below for more information on where you can buy one. And again, quantities are limited, so I'd act fast if you're on the fence. Now this is a very thin and light ultra portable and performance actually is very good. Now this being an 8th generation processor, you're looking at about a 40% boost in performance over last year's 7th generation KV Lake. And you're also getting a little bit of extra boost with that MX150 GPU. It's not much, but it definitely certainly helps a little bit. Now, keep something in mind, this is not a dedicated gaming laptop. This is more of an ultra portable for more general purpose use. But you can do some gaming, as you can see here, some pretty good results, and it certainly helps that it does have that dedicated GPU. 
but having such a thin and light device does have its trade-offs. When I streamed an HD video for 15 minutes, it did get warm. Above the 95 degree Fahrenheit threshold, it got 103 degrees on the bottom. On the keyboard, it got 101 degrees, but it stayed relatively cool around the touchpad. It's a bit warmer than some of its competition. And under heavy load, it will start to thermal throttle. Under the Witcher 3 stress test, which is representative of real-world gaming, the CPU and GPU can be observed running steadily at 3 GHz for the CPU and 1.03 MHz for the GPU, respectively, with core temperatures in the mid-70 degrees Celsius range. And performance degrades slightly over time. Last year's Matebook X was a fanless design, and I think in a smart move to keep things cool, they went with a fan in this model. And notice that huge heatsink to try to keep things cool? They went with a thin and light device, so they needed to have such a large heatsink, that's for sure. And as I mentioned, under heavy load, it will get warm, but it won't burn you, so I think it's being effectively cooled for the most part. Although the fans do kick in, they don't make a lot of noise, unlike some other laptops where it can be very distracting, so that's pretty good. Now the RAM is soldered on so you won't be able to upgrade that, but you can replace the M2 SATA SSD drive. It's a PCIe NVMe, it's light on, and it actually had pretty good scores. We'll look at that in just a moment. But in order to access it, you'll have to remove that huge copper heatsink. I'm not sure how easy that is. If anybody has done it, please let me know in the comment section below. And as you can see from the Crystal Disk Mark scores, excellent reads, good writes, overall pretty good. And the port selection is so much better than last year's MateBook X. Here you get two USB Thunderbolt 3 ports, supports four lanes, so if you want to connect to an eGPU, you have that option. You have your 3.5mm headset jack as well. And you also get a full-size USB Type-A. Excellent, something that was missing from last year's model. Unfortunately, there's no micro SD card slot or full-size SD card slot for storage expansion. And they give you the Mate Dock 2 in the box. That's pretty good. You get another USB-C, you get a VGA, and you get an HDMI out, as well as an additional USB Type-A. Now, as I stated in my unboxing and first impressions video, I really like this keyboard. It has a really good feel to it at 1.1 millimeters of key travel. Of course, it's a bit on the shallow side, but you don't feel like your fingers are going to bottom out, and it has good tactile feedback. It has multi-stage backlighting and lights up the keys pretty evenly. Oh, did I mention this is also a spill-proof keyboard, so if you spill your coffee or your water on it, it's not the end of the world. And it has an excellent touchpad with precision drivers, it was very responsive, it has good decent size to it, almost MacBook-like, and it can do your two-finger scrolling, it was a pleasure, as well as you can do your Windows 10 gestures without any issues. The speakers on the Huawei MateBook X Pro are simply outstanding. There's a total of four, two on the top and two on the bottom. These are second generation Dolby Atmos speakers and they are excellent. Get full in terms of volume and it has overall rich sound. Really good bass, everything you'd want in speakers on a laptop. This sets the standard. power buttons located right above the keyboard, just above the delete key, and it also doubles as a fingerprint sensor, and this has one of the best, most responsive fingerprint sensors I've ever used on a laptop. It's that good. Works perfectly with Windows Hello. It has a 56.3 watt hour battery, and I have to say, this is an excellent all day device, that's for sure. And here's how it does against its competition. It did 10 hours and 12 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. It beat out the Apple MacBook Pro, the HP Spectre 13, the XPS 13 from Dell, and the category average. And in mixed use case scenario, you're gonna get about eight to nine hours, which is excellent. And it supports fast charging, charging the device from 0 to 100% in about an hour and 15 minutes. That's pretty good. The Huawei MateBook X Pro is a speedy machine with a gorgeous display, comfortable keyboard, and solid battery life. I would highly recommend this over any other laptop right now. This is one of my favorites, even over the 13-inch MacBook Pro. If it were easy to buy this machine in the US, that would make it even better. But again, limited quantities are one of its biggest negatives. It also has some of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard on a laptop. They're that good. 
So far, this is the laptop to beat for 2018 in the ultra portable category. I'm going to give it 94%, making the Huawei MateBook X Pro worth your money. So what do you think about the Huawei MateBook X Pro? So far, this is my favorite laptop of 2018 in the ultra portable category. It checks all the boxes, the beautiful looks, the excellent build quality, the gorgeous 3K touch display, the great all day battery life, the outstanding quad speakers. It doesn't get much better than this, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I'm gonna give this my editor's choice award for the ultra portable category here in mid 2018. This is the best. This is the, this is the standard that all other laptops will have to live up to so far in my opinion. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. It's aggressively priced at $1,500 for the Core i7-8550U model. It has that dedicated NVIDIA GeForce MX150 GPU. That's outstanding. Now, of course, it's not going to be a gaming laptop, as I stated. This is a more general purpose, ultra portable, thin and light, great for taking you with you on the go. But it definitely can get the work done. It can definitely do some gaming, as evidenced by those benchmarks. And really, there's no deal breaker on this. There's no real negatives. Uh, maybe you want to say there's no SD card slot or micro SD card slot for storage expansion, but that to me is minor. I like the fact they include the Mate Dock 2 in the box, allowing you to get some more port expansion. But again, I want to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. It's available at Amazon. It's available at the Microsoft Store. And I was able to import my model, the Core i5, with that MX150 GPU at a premium, of course, through AliExpress. But I don't recommend that. If you're in the United States, go with those great deals over at Amazon or at Microsoft. I think you're gonna do better. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.